Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to another episode of Highlighting Greatness. My name is Pisayo, and I'm very, very excited to bring to you uh, an interview that I'm, again, excited about. This is someone that I consider uh, a sister. And without further ado, uh, please welcome Chi Chi to, to the podcast. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Hi, so Chi Chi, um, we've known each other for for quite a while. We go back. <laughs> um, yeah. Why don't we just start by just I'll, I'll I'll just explain how I how we met. I think it was in church. It had to be in church, and um, yeah. And in this, I mean, I I met B J first. B J is your husband. Everyone knows B J, but uh, funny guy. <laughs> Um, and then by the time we met, I think we just connected over pharmacy. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. from there, you know, you've been really like just a big sister to me, uh, been able to be really helpful whenever I had issues, whatever, whether it was questions calling you and you were just always very accessible, very, um, Aww. very open. Thank you. Thank and you. So that's why that's why I'm just excited about this because there's so much I've learned from you over the years and I'm excited to just bring that out and um, kind of uh, put it out there a little bit. And I'm honored to be on your show. <laughs> Look at you doing great things. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. So why don't we just start off? Um, just uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit more about yourself, who you are, your background, Okay, well, I'm Chi Chi, which is short for Chi Very. Uh, my life is so broad. Where do I start from? So, like he said, I'm married. I have two girls. I am a pharmacist by profession, and of course, we met we met at church. So, I am a Christian also, which is very important to me. Uh, what else would you like to know? I'm very driven. You know, I. Whatever I want to achieve, I usually will go for it 100%. So that's pretty much, and I'm, I'm straightforward. <laughs> my yes is my yes, and my no is my no. And um, a lot of people come to me for advice, mostly because of that, because they know I will tell them the truth, you know, and yeah. Right. And that's, Thank you. you know, that's, uh, that's kind of what I've seen over the years is that you're you know, very straightforward. <laughs> you give it to us just like it is. <laughs> I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> right. Oh, um, um, but you're you're very you're very level headed. You're very logical. Um, you you. you know, I can call you just you know when I'm in the middle of something and I just need to to talk to someone and you know sure. you're always there. So I I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, thank you. How did you, why don't you tell us a little bit about maybe even how you got into pharmacy? Hmm. So how did I get into pharmacy? So from when I was a kid, you know, uh, I loved taking medications when I was a kid. So I was one of those weird kids. You know how like most people, they don't like taking kills and all that when they're kids. Yeah. Um, but I was so scared of injections, like shots. <laughs> so... Um, as a result, I'll rather take a pill than take a shot. So that just grew my curiosity. Um, fast forward years later, when I moved over here, um, Houston, Texas. So it was really, at first I was going to do nursing. I actually enrolled for a CNA class, if you know, um, like a nurse assistant course. I actually got my certificate. And then while working, I was like, like wow. This is not for me, <laughs> right. you know. Um, so I went back to you know what I'm used to, which is a pharmacy. But I think the challenge for me at that time was that I noticed it was going to take me a lot of years to accomplish. It was risky because you really will have nothing to show for it until you get to the end. So you have to be like either you're all in or you're all out. There was no halfway, you know. So yeah. That's how I got into pharmacy, of course. Uh, it took me seven years to do the program because I had to do the pre 
pharmacy. And then I went on to do the pharmacy. And then after that, years started working. And then years later, I went back to do a residency, which I could have done when I first got out. But I had met my husband in college. We had waited a long time. And so to me, it was almost like residency or getting married to my husband. So I kind of had to pick one. Well, right. it wasn't like I had to pick one. He didn't make me pick one, but I just felt like that was more important at that stage right. of my life, choosing a family. So I did that and eventually went back to residency. And and that's that's amazing because um, you're you're a wife, as you as you mentioned, you're a mother of two, and you're yeah. a professional. Um, yes which is why i really wanted to get you on here because you've been able to you've been able to balance all, a lot you know all of that really um why don't you tell us what and and still kind of stay humble you you stay humble you stay um accessible you know you don't you don't you don't give up an air of you know um of of of, of you know pride or anything like that to where, you know, people like myself <laughs> can still come and say, hey, big sis, this and this, and this is happening, you know. Um, how, how is it that you've been able to kind of stay grounded, I guess? That's one thing that I, that again, I do admire about you. As accomplished as I see you and as accomplished as a lot of people see you, um, to have a family life, a really great family life with your family your husband, mm -hmm. your two kids, um, and happy birthday. I know today was your daughter's, <laughs> your younger daughter's birthday. Happy birthday to her. Yeah, thank you. Um, you Just were able to, like, like <laughs> even this, right? This is, this is what I'm talking about. You know, you, you had your, your, your daughter's birthday party earlier birthday. today. I didn't yes. even know about that, but you right. still were able to take time out, you know, to, yes. to do this with me. Like, that's awesome. Like, not a lot of people would do that, you know? Oh, well, I think it's all about planning. I think once you plan life, yes, life is going to throw surprises and challenges. Sometimes everything can't be perfect, but I think what has helped me so far is planning and um, priorities. So in my life, I have priorities. And so whenever something comes up, I'm able to either move things up the list or down the list. And for me, of course, first, first is God, but after that is my family, and then my profession. So, so for me, family will always come first. Like I always said, if I have to give up my profession for my child, I will do that because they come first to me, obviously. Right. But then again, just because you're a mom, I feel like you can also do other things with your life. You don't have to lose who you are, the core, your core values and, you know, just your dreams as a little girl. Just because you're married doesn't mean you have to give up all of that. You might have to give up a few, if I'm being honest. <laughs> but um, I just feel like as a woman, you can still be whatever you want to be. You can still pursue your dreams. And that's amazing uh, because that is what I've seen you do over and over and over again, right? <laughs> like, um, yeah. I remember, you know, when when you called me initially and you told me that, you know, you had aspirations, you wanted to kind of pivot a little bit in your in yeah. in your career, and you know, you were thinking about going for a residency, yeah. and which for for those who are not, you know, in pharmacy, um, a lot of times a residency is done after graduation. You know, it could be one year, it can be it can be two years long. Um, and at that point, you had been you had been a pharmacist. You had been working how? Uh, yeah. How long? How long at that point you had been out of school? Eight years. Wow. <laughs> Eight years. Eight you know. Years. So you, here you were, you know, a veteran. You know, <laughs> eight years in, uh, mm -hmm. in a great career, right? It was yeah. already a great career, you know. And yep. a lot of people, what I admired about you is that a lot of people are would are just are, are would be satisfied and just, you know, hey, you've done yeah. well. 
You've mm -hmm. come a long way. You've accomplished a lot. You have a great job, but mm -hmm. you, you felt like, hey, there's something else that you wanted to get into, yeah. you know, yeah. um, that drive, you know, that you mentioned earlier. How do you, how do you, how do you harness that? You know, even though you have all these other priorities, your, your family, your children, um, but you're still wanting to, to achieve those dreams that you had initially of, hey, you know what, I still want to do this. Like, how is it that you're able to still do that? Whereas, you know, yeah. <laughs> there are people that don't have all those and they're still not pursuing their dreams to that level. I think ultimately it comes to what you want out of life. So as a little girl, I had dreams, you know, and one thing my dad always told me growing up was never. All right, we're back with uh, this second part of this interview. And so we were asking, we were getting into just talking about how you, even though you're a mother, you're a wife, you, your, your family is your priority, you're still going for your dreams in your career mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about how you're able to kind of balance all of that? Well, I mean, I guess for me personally, I believe that it's all about what you want in life. So since I was a kid, every kid, I assume, has dreams. Um, I had dreams of at least what I wanted to be when I grew up or how I pictured my life. And being that I was an only girl with um, three brothers, my dad, I, I usually faced, you know, comments that people made about, oh, you're, you're just a girl, you know, all you have to do is grow up and get married. So my dad would constantly instill in me that even though you're a female, you could still achieve whatever you wanted to. So it was something he constantly reminded me of and treated me the same like he would treat my brothers and always told me even though you get married still pursue your dreams still be who you want to be and i believe that the minute you give up on your dreams then you start dying a little bit inside of you wow so i think it's important to pursue what you want yes there are some times when i have to cut your dreams a little bit back sometimes but just giving up altogether is not acceptable as far as i'm concerned that's awesome that's that's amazing um, because just culturally, uh, I understand some of the things mm -hmm. that women face. And even yeah. still today, you, you hear people that still say that to this day. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's awesome. And so you had that instilled in you, you know, from an early yes. age by, from yes. your dad. And that's just, you know, what you've, what, what, what's helped you. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about, I guess, your journey even like with that, you know, and some of the obstacles maybe that you faced along the way, um, just so far till, till now and how you overcame them. So of course the first one I can remember was when I decided to come here to school. Um, my parents didn't have a lot of money. I think, I mean, they just had like a portion of my first, of my tuition i think maybe the first and the second year when i was leaving and so the first struggle i had was financial so when i came here i realized a lot of scholarships i couldn't qualify for a lot of them because i came in as an international student but the few that were available i realized that if i studied hard and got good gpas and um you know it's part of a lot of other things in school i would qualify and that would give me institution. So of course, that's what I did. So while I was still working on campus, while I was in school, I got some scholarships that made me qualify to be able to pay institution. So that was the first major challenge that I had, and that was how I dealt with it. And so of course, with you know me working on campus, on campus and my whatever I could get from home, I was able to get through school which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do nursing at first, because it was shorter, you know, but eventually I had to tell myself it's all or nothing. 
And sometimes you have to be able to pursue your dreams and realize that if I fail, I haven't really lost anything at all in the first place. So you have to be able to give it all you have and just pray that God makes it the best, you know. And so that was the first challenge. Second challenge was getting into pharmacy school. It was really difficult. Um, it wasn't just about GPAs, but that was like one of the most important parts of it, getting in. And then I had to work also as a student. So it was kind of difficult being able to be in all these committees. I was a treasurer. I was like so many other positions while I was in school, you know, just trying to be able to have a balanced life. And then while I was in school, I met my husband in college. <laughs> so I think that was not enough. Now I had to balance getting a, a, a GPA that was not less than 3.9. And then I had to somehow maintain a relationship like with a guy I was going to get married to. And then, you know, work on campus to help with finances. So it was a lot. But I just kept pushing on. There were some hard days, but... Hey, I had friends that were supportive. That's really important. Friends who accept you for who you are, who don't try to make you somebody else. Friends that you can call on. And so I've had a lot of people support me. I'll tell you that much. It wasn't something I did by myself. You know, I had people who would encourage me, you know. So that's a big part of my journey. And then, of course, I had my husband who was so supportive. Well, then he was my husband, but he was um, supportive too. You know, he was willing to wait five years for me to finish school. So not many men would do that because um, that was another important part of it. And then after school, the next challenge was getting a job. Uh, so it wasn't as difficult as it is now. But of course, because I was in so many organizations in school, I had contacted a lot of the people that would come and recruit from school. They already knew me because you know I was part of the officials like you call it right now so I was able to get a job and that's how I started working as a pharmacist but then at the same time I got married the same year that I graduated so because of course it was something I also wanted to do for a long time so I tried to focus on that building a family and having kids while not letting go of my career and still being able to be on my A game. So it wasn't really easy, but balancing both of them you know, was kind of difficult. And then when I felt like, okay, I had my kids, I decided to go ahead and push for residency, even though so many people told me it was impossible because I had been out of school for so long. So that's a summary of my right. journey. Right. And that's, that's amazing. You know, you, you mentioned having a good support system. Yes. Um, initially, you even mentioned finding, getting information when you were uh, about the, your financial, you know, the financial struggles initially of how do you pay for your education, but you got yes. informed about there are these different scholarships available that can help yes. you qualify for in-state tuition and, you know, assist in that way. So you, you researched, you got that information and you were able to put it to good use and yeah. that helped having a good supporting system, you know, and then just still balancing, you know, even after you get out of there still, you know, um, you graduated, but getting a job, you were able to pull on some of the resources and the networking mm -hmm. that you were part of, as, you know, yes. In your important organizations to help you, which I think is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but but then now you're we you know pivot into getting a residency and <laughs> let's talk about that for a little bit. I we mentioned that <laughs> earlier, but yeah, you you just said not a lot of people supported you in that or, or or even really understood why you were doing it. Why don't you? And for those that don't that aren't aware, like I mentioned earlier, residency is a postgraduate year training that can be either one or two years and you went for it after you were out of many people go after go you know get into it right after they graduate right, right? Yes. and uh, a lot of times it, it helps you get into clinical positions um, you had graduated and had been working already for about eight years mm -hmm. what got you to i remember that time when you called me and <laughs> 
I do remember that conversation and you were talking to me and again, goes back to uh, one of the things that we have in common is that we're both driven, you know? Why don't you tell us what made you even start thinking about getting a residency and going for that in the first place? Hmm. So even, even had... though, <laughs> even though it's difficult, even though, mm -hmm. you know, um, <laughs> even though it, it'd be challenging and you would be leaving kind of your comfort yeah. zone and all of this stuff. Yeah. So when I first started practicing, I practiced in the retail and managed care areas of healthcare. Um, when I did retail, I felt like I didn't use everything that was taught in school. Uh, I'm, I have a very curious mind. <laughs> My husband would tell you that um, um, when you say one thing to me, I imagine seven different ways that could happen. Um, it could be a good and a bad thing because <laughs> you can, some people say I'm a deep thinker. So sometimes I felt like I just wanted more. You know, I was bored. Let me just put it like that. I was bored not because because there wasn't there were challenges but I just always wanted to know more right. and so that quest and then I had goals in life that I felt like I had put on pause to have a family obviously and I felt like doing a residency would help me get to where I'm still on a journey, obviously, um, to get, help me get to where I really want to get to. And then pharmacy as an industry is really completed right now. And being that I had already been out of school a couple of years, I felt like residency would be a faster track. I mean, I could have gone to just work some more years and gotten some more experience in different areas of pharmacy because pharmacy has so many different areas, obviously. Um, but I decided to go, it, what people would say is the hard way, but I feel like even though something's difficult, if you look at the benefits you're going to get, if it's worth it, then do it, you know? And so I felt like it was a shorter route for me to accomplish my goals, even though it was a more difficult route. And so I had to <laughs> pretty much tour between Houston and um, Corpus Christi. I was going back and forth. You know, it was tough for me as a mom because I didn't, you know, I'm usually always with my kids, but I wasn't always with them. It was really tough, but I had to keep reminding myself of the goals. And then I had to catch up on all the things that I had knowledge and things I hadn't used in years. So yes, yeah, some days I would maybe go to work at 6 a.m. I wouldn't get back till like 11 p.m. I mean, sorry, residency, yeah, which is like, which is like work and, and school at the same time. You know, so sometimes, you know, it'll take me, like, I'll be there all day working or, you know, practicing. And, yeah, it was it was one of the most difficult things I've ever done. So, but I went for it. No, I got for, it. For, for people that don't, that may not realize or understand the rigors of a residency or really the strain of a residency, um we're back uh apologize we were yeah. having tough technical difficulties yeah but you had just uh you had just explained how challenging that year was doing a residency and um yeah. i was trying to explain it because i understand it even though i didn't do a residency mm -hmm. in my profession as a pharmacist i understand what it is um and I was just kind of giving a background for our non-pharmacy listeners um, mm -hmm. to to kind of the rigors of it, you know. Um, you're basically working maybe sometimes 12, 16 hour days at this <laughs> residency where it's super intensive. Yeah. It's yeah. really yeah. challenging. Oh, you, yeah. took, <laughs> you, <laughs> uh, you were still keeping your job and on a part-time prn basis mm -hmm. you were shuffling between houston and corpus which is what about three hours or so about three and a half yeah yeah um still having you know still taking care of your kids and you know taking care of the home front and all of that stuff 
while you know doing all this for a massive massive pay cut oh yes <laughs> right maybe maybe something like a quarter of what you were making okay. before yeah um, which and i and i remember there were there were times <laughs> that you would call me and you were just going through it you know yeah. you were, it was I, it was difficult it was challenging and you would call me expressing to me you know just how you <laughs> You know, you you hated that you were away from 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 home, family. Your, your family, your kids. Uh, yeah. You 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 were mm -hmm. still having to work uh, mm -hmm. at your previous job. At your you know, you're still at that job. Um, yeah, yeah right. And all I can do, I couldn't really help too much, except mm -hmm. just try to encourage you to hang in there. Hey, it's it's almost it's almost over. You're gonna get through it. You're gonna. And I know yeah. I remember you would even call me and say, "Oh, well, I've got this next, this next uh, rotation or whatever, and it's super challenging. You know, people didn't pass. You know, this and that." And I would say, "No, mm -hmm. just, just stay focused. You got this. You got this." How did you get through that very challenging period? You know. Hmm. Well, I'll say that's where my faith in God came in. I have to. Tell you that because that was the same year my dad lost my um husband lost his dad wow and i had to move my kids to a new school wow and <laughs> and i oh man that was a tough year but um the first year was tough year but um i don't know that i, I got through it through god that's what i was saying because yeah. i don't know how else i could have made it there were days i was crying there were days i was just like i know <laughs> You know, but I got through it. The most important thing is pushing your dreams. I told myself, I'm going to do this. And I just decided to put my fear aside and pursue it. Right. And I told myself, you see that I feel doing it or I get it done. And sometimes in life, that's all you need to do is just take a step of faith. You know, right. that's it. <laughs> right. The great American poet by the name of 50 Cent once said, get rich or die trying. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, not it. <laughs> I mean, like, pursue your dreams. If you really want it bad, you pursue it. You might not succeed, but at least you, you won't have to regret that you didn't try, you know. Right. Yeah. How, do you, how do you stay, and even now that you're on the other side of that and you know, I know you mentioned earlier that yes, it's still a, you're still on your journey. How do you mm -hmm. stay? How do you keep that hunger? How do you keep that, you know, kind of mindset where you're not, you're not complacent, you're not just satisfied with, you know, what maybe many other people would be satisfied with. Hey, you're you're a pharmacist. Hey, you have got a good job. Hey, it's it's paying well. Hey, you know, this and that. <laughs> be satisfied. Shut up and just be satisfied, right? A lot of people told me that too before I went to a residency. A lot of people thought I was crazy. Right. Because, you know, I was in a good place too. Um, I just think it's about you. What do you want? So in terms of being complacent, it's really like easy to just relax. But I always say, what do you want? And how bad do you want it? Are you comfortable enough to give up on your dreams? And comfortable enough that are you willing to live with the regret i just don't want to wake up one day and be like i wish i think that's one of my biggest fears just right. feeling like i never got to do what i always wanted to do i just feel like that's worse than failing right. it's living with regret for right. me that's that's worse so the fear of living in regret is what pushes me every day and that's that's awesome and that's something that you know it's kind of it's almost become cliche when you hear people say it you know maybe people that are you know retired or you know on their deathbeds and they're like oh you know mm -hmm. follow this you know if you want to follow your dreams do it you know don't you know they regret x y and z and you know but that is true you know you if you don't go for it and yeah. <laughs> Even if you fail, but you never went for it, you won't know, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And um, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing that you've you've been able to push through that way. 
what are um, maybe be, without getting so so specific, what are some of the other, I guess, things that you want to check off your your My your list. bucket <laughs> your bucket list? You know, go. What are what are some of your few uh, some some endeavors that you're still wanting to? Because sure. at this point, you're <laughs> you're. We we always joke with each other who's older, who's not. <laughs> <laughs> you are <old>. but, uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but you're you know, no, you're 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 married, you have children, mm-hmm. you have a great family life, you're a professional, you're you're pursuing what you want in your profession and in your career. What are, what mm-hmm. what what else is there at this point, you know, for uh someone like yourself that's seemingly has accomplished all these things already not just seemingly you have accomplished all these well i mean i still have a lot of dreams that i haven't checked off so one of them is traveling which i said you know little by little it's always been my dream to travel i mean i've started it but you know i had to cut back a little bit on that another thing is i love food if you know me i love food so i have to figure out a way to get into that somewhat um another thing i'm very passionate about is I'm big on charities like um, most especially charities that cater to the basic needs of people and so someday I hope to get more into that um, actually that's one of the things I'm really passionate about I just need to figure out a way to balance everything you know um, right. obviously I don't want to ever give up being a pharmacist because I love being a pharmacist but I have to figure out a way to put everything together that's awesome. Funny, funny. Um, <laughs> you mentioned travel. I remember, you know, yeah. some time ago when me and you were talking, and uh, mm-hmm. your baby came in the room. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? Oh yeah, yeah. And she said, um, "What did she say?" She said, "Mommy, like, we need to, we need a vacation. I need to go on vacation." <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, and vacation said, is part of my family. That's like a that's like a normal. Yeah. That's a normal thing. Even the kids know it. Right. <laughs> that's awesome. And I I said, "Hey, um that's right. Me and me and Grace and you <laughs> <laughs> just for that for this uh, moment just adopt me <laughs> and take me with you all and let's all go traveling." Oh, uh, Lord, that's But funny. uh no, that that's awesome, you know. That's that's amazing. And obviously you're 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 doing all of this stuff what are what are some of the things you you mentioned giving back and you mentioned um you know kind of volunteering can you tell us and i know you've gotten into that a little bit because that's something that you're passionate about yes can you can you tell us a little bit about some of the things that you you have volunteered in and ways that you have you know kind of done that a little bit so i mean i volunteer for so many places but I think most of the places you will find me volunteering are places that either have to do with food water and shelter or healthcare. Gotcha. but for me I just the reason I'm just passionate about thing um the basic needs of life is just because I know where I'm coming from okay I have seen people in need I know what it feels like for someone not to have, not necessarily because I haven't had like them, but you know, when, when you grow up around people who have been in need, you tend to hear their stories, you tend to know what they're talking about and the complaints they have. So that's big on my mind. And I feel like just sometimes we take what we have for granted. You think your position is bad, but there's someone in a far worse position than you are in. So for me, it's just something I'm really, really passionate about. And when I'm not able to volunteer, you know, there are other ways you can help, like maybe give some money. Or, but time is like the most valuable thing as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, I have a little, um, volunteered in maybe church organizations, um, a lot of like, <laughs> so many of them. I don't even know where to start. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm big on. I know you've uh, mentioned to me you know, in the past that you, you also, you, you mentor, um, younger, younger women and things like that, yeah. which mm-hmm. is, which is why I really wanted to get you on here because, and I told you, and the, the thing about 
the thing about you know you is you're really humble again you're down to earth you're grounded you know mm -hmm. um i was telling you some time ago how no like there are people like even myself who look up to you because you are accomplished these things that i want to get to you know um, you. and if i you know if i'm saying that i can imagine there are many other people that are saying that as well you know you're you you're married you're you're a mother you have two beautiful daughters you've gone through your edu you know your schooling you're you know well educated you're a professional woman career driven as well your 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 faith is important to you you didn't let go of any of that your your charity is important to you and volunteering and giving back that's important to you you're also pouring into the lives of younger women you know and that's why i wanted to really <laughs> um sit down with you because i was when i was telling you this early you know some time back that hey look like to some people you might you might be that that figure that they're looking at you know in the flesh of wow you know mm -hmm. she did this she did that you know and you don't even see it that way <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh who is he talking about <laughs> okay <laughs> you don't even see it that way right. but you know what like no that's that's awesome you know um what is it that you can i guess kind of how how is it that you well how do you do that kind of mentoring just i guess on a general level for you know kind of younger people men women who are mm -hmm. not where they might want to be you know as far as you know maybe relationship goals family goals their career their schooling you know they're still they're still working towards it you know and you that have that has been there how are you how are you how are you able to kind of inspire them i guess well i mean of course i get a lot of um, young women and some older people who come to me and tell me oh you know i want to do this i want to do that nothing gives me more joy than seeing a woman with a dream it makes me so happy when a woman has a dream because i just feel and some people might say i'm a feminist but it's just i feel like a lot of women don't have people to encourage them or to look up to or they've been told all their lives oh you're just a woman you know just focus on getting a man to marry you or <laughs> focus on that while that is important you know depending on what you want in life i also think that they're still people, they're humans, just like everybody else. They have dreams, you know, the same way you feel as a man in terms of towards your dreams is the same way some of these women feel and they feel like they have to give that up to become what someone else wants them to be. And that can be, they might not vocalize it, but that can hurt. So when they come to me, I ask them, if you were a little girl and you didn't have to worry about finances, you didn't have to worry about anything, what would you want to do? what would you want to be because sometimes our fears limit our dreams and so when you tell me what you want to do without if you had everything perfect 100 percent perfect then i'll say let's break that that break down that goal into little bits of um, little steps or you know that we can go by so we say maybe this is step one step two step three step four and i tell them don't look at the big picture just look at those steps Try to get step one done. Forget about two, three, four, five. Just do step one. If you can do step one, then maybe you can do two, three, and four. So I think the thing that holds a lot of women back is that we're looking at the big picture. How do I get this huge thing done? So no, just get step one done. So that's what I always tell them. And of course, encourage them, you know, that you can be anything, anything that you want to be. You know, so that's what I tell them. That's awesome. Hey, what about the man? Can we get some encouragement here? <laughs> <laughs> you can. I mean, hey, you've called me about things before too, right? I yeah. mean, of course. As a man, I I don't think I need to tell you you can be whatever you want to be. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I'm men kidding. have their <laughs> men have their challenges too. You know, they face right. a lot of pressures in life. 
they're supposed to be um, lead, they're supposed to supposedly be rich <laughs> or have a lot of money, you know, there's all these stereotypes that men have to try to live up to most times. So yeah, it is difficult for men too and as women, that's why we yeah. support you all, you know, and try to encourage you guys. Now that's awesome. Um, and that that's amazing. So if any, any young woman, young man wants to, <laughs> <laughs> wants a, a mentor she, she's a great one she's i would say more of a friend <laughs> you want a friend yeah, <laughs> when you say mentor i look at my, you like whoa okay yeah but if you want a friend you can talk to yeah. ask questions of course she, she's okay. humble um <laughs> no and and that's that's awesome because you know again that's part of why i reach out to you so much is because mm -hmm you are still grounded you are still humble you are still accessible you don't you don't you know carry yourself with this oh unapproachable air where you know you you're you know whatever where you feel so grandiose you're very grounded and um you know i i i value that and so many times again not just that but the the insight that you have really how you're able to just really look at situations at a from a very logical <laughs> perspective <laughs> yeah call it like it is <laughs> exactly you know um you can you can tell me things from you know a woman's perspective you know if i'm having <laughs> if i'm having girl problems and jay-z doesn't feel bad for me <laughs> I can call Chi Chi. <laughs> you would tell me like it is, but you you know you're you're sweet about it. <laughs> but you know, um, that's that's great. How is it that and and I know that it's not just me. You have there there are other people that have that have that have come to you and have been able to really benefit from the great advice and the great just you know uh, insight that you're able to provide. Of hey this is mm -hmm. this is the situation that you're in you may not you may not be able to see it but this mm -hmm. is what <laughs> is actually happening this is why this person is doing this this is why you're feeling this way you know mm -hmm. this is why um this you know this and this is going on whether at work or blah 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 you're able to kind of take you know come outside of the situation look mm -hmm. and really give a very a very logical you know and um objective feedback very you know that 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 helps that's very helpful and a lot of times i'm like oh wow thank you i didn't even <laughs> i didn't even think about it like that yeah so, so growing up i used to play chess a lot so <laughs> so my <laughs> and i played my dad checkers. taught me oh really i don't know how to play that yeah <laughs> so that's why dad... that's why you're so smart because chess is oh. a smart man's <laughs> game <laughs> that's funny so like my dad taught me how to, when you look at a situation, there's always so many different perspectives to it. And you have to be able to see every single perspective of it before you can judge a situation. And so whenever, you know, I, I'm in a situation, I ask myself, what was that person thinking? And that person's thought might be stupid to you, but it is their thought. And until you're able to look at another person's perspective, you're gonna make a wrong decision or a wrong turn. So, but when you're able to consider every aspect of a situation, it helps you make a good judgment. So every time I try to step out of my emotions, mm. it's hard, especially for me, <laughs> but you know, I try my best to step out of my emotions and be like, what is this person feeling? What is this person thinking? Doesn't necessarily make them right, but their thoughts and their feelings are valid. Right. And right. then in terms of like corporate world, you also want to look at if you were the boss, what would you do? Before right. you judge your boss, think about it. It's a business. Every move they make is a business move. And so if you can understand that, then you know how to how do they say play the game? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Um, that, 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 that's, that's, that's amazing. Just being able to be, um, to take yourself out of 
the situation mm -hmm. and consider it from someone else's perspective. Uh, but you're right, you know, uh, speaking about business, we, we've talked a little bit about some business kind of things mm -hmm. that, you know, we've done. And that's another thing that I, that I admire about you, that you're, you're not just, you know, oh, you're just a pharmacist. No, you also, <laughs> you, 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 you're, you've done other things or you do other things beyond just yeah. that, you know, um, mm -hmm. that are, that are business savvy. Um, and yeah. we've talked about a little bit of that. I had, a, I had someone on my podcast earlier um, that is also a pharmacist. And, you know, I learned a lot from him about, you know, different things like investing, real estate, things mm -hmm. like that. And from you as well, you know, we've talked about those types of things. Can, we, yeah. can, you, can you mention just briefly some of, how, you know, your, your <laughs> thoughts on some things like that? I mean, I think real estate, obviously, like we have talked about, is a big way to invest for the future long term. So, you know, um, not to go into a lot of details, I'm also passionate about that because I feel like property is one of the most stable things. Right. Land property is one of the most stable things you can have. It's, it might not be a very quick way to make profit, but it's a very good long term investment um i also believe in like buying stocks bonds but you have to be careful obviously what you invest in so yeah it, that's a whole nother like a <laughs> big area I, I mean only no business too you know i do that with my husband so you know that's another thing i feel like you should at least try to do something business-wise if you can you know not everybody's and not everyone can do a business, but if you can, you know, start small. Um, you know, sure. don't ignore little beginnings because they're they're always the the you know the, the seed for great things to germinate from. Right, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, again, like I said, I, I learn a lot from you. You're you're very insightful. <laughs> no, you're not just Thank a farm. You. You're not just oh, a pharmacist. You're not just you know. <laughs> oh chi chi no you and people don't know that <laughs> uh yeah we don't want them to know that either <laughs> you're right forget that we'll, we'll edit this <laughs> <laughs> no that's fine that's fine yeah. <laughs> but um no that's awesome I, i'm, I'm try, just uh -huh. trying to say that you're you're not you don't you don't fit into some stereotype of you're just this uh -huh. you know you're just that you know and at the same time you mentioned food you're a great cook. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love food. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I leave to eat. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've talked about some of that before as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm still upset that, you know, you, you're going to, you put all the, you post all these food pictures and stuff and oh, that are coming by. And uh, I, well, I it's still usually first come food. first. Well, you're always late. I mean, there's people, my neighbors literally before, I, in fact, by the time they smell it, it's gone. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna have to talk to DJ about it. You know, I'm going to report to the DJ. Oh, <laughs> Lord. He'll probably be fighting for the food with you. <laughs> oh, man. No, that's oh. awesome. Um, mm -hmm. This is This is amazing. Are there any any last you, you've left us with just a lot of just gems and a lot of things to think about a lot of you know just your your perspective mm -hmm. is what i really mm -hmm. wanted to try to get out of this you know podcast this interview um any last you know if, if there's one thing else that you you could say to anybody out there that's you know they may not see the they may not see the way that they can get to where they're trying to go. You know, mm -hmm. we're in a pandemic. There are a lot of people that are mm -hmm. out of work. Um, there are a lot of people that are at, you know, just the, the end of their, <laughs> yeah. their, 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 you know, um, end of the line, you know, um, just willpower, you know, and just frustrated. They're down. They, you know, and they just may not see be able to see that right now you know they just may not mm -hmm. be able to see that even that gold it may seem so far away it may seem so distant it may seem so you know mm -hmm. far-fetched at this point 
Yeah. Is there anything that you you would you know for people like that maybe? How how would I'll, you? I'll would say, you say. I'll say what I always say, and I think I probably said that to you before. Um, think of a time in your life, something difficult you went through in the past. A time when you thought you'd never get through that. A time you thought at that moment that you thought it was the most difficult thing you had ever been through. And think about the fact that now it's in the past and you got through it. Right. You might not know how you got through it, but you did get through it because you're right. here today and you're able to right. talk about it. Right. So also, where you are today, at some point in the future, you are going to be able to look back and say, wow, I got through this. Let that be an encouragement. That's how I always encourage myself. Right. Let that be an encouragement. So even if people are telling you everything's going to be okay and you don't believe it, you don't see it, just remember that there was a time you thought that you were going through something difficult and you got through it. So encourage yourself with that. And of course, you know that God loves you. He's looking out for you, even though you don't feel like it. You know, he is looking out for you and he loves you. That's all I'll say. That's awesome. Um, and I, I can actually remember, you know, <laughs> when when you told me that. <laughs> um, yep, in the past, right? <laughs> right, right. No, I and remember. you through that. Yeah, it was a very difficult time. I was going through just a lot in my life mm -hmm. and I was I was between jobs and I just couldn't. I couldn't see past that moment, right? And I remember when I when you you would call me. I wouldn't you. I wouldn't even. I wasn't the one calling you. You, but you knew that I was going through a rough time. Yeah. And you kept on checking on me, which I appreciate again. Um, yeah. But you would call me and you just say, "Hey, how are you doing?" And I would just express, you know, just how frustrated I was and this mm -hmm. and that. And I remember you told me, "Take vacation." <laughs> you know <laughs> and you're like are you crazy <laughs> yeah and i you, wish you took that vacation <laughs> exactly like i'm just looking back like man <laughs> you know because by the time you told me yeah go and mm -hmm. go on vacation and i'm like how can I? <laughs> but no by the time you know i got into you know my job and everything <laughs> just starts rolling and I'm like, God, she was right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, no, that that's awesome. You know, the you know, being able to to have someone, you know, that can yeah. tell you things like that and just say, Hey, it's gonna be okay. Don't get don't get stuck well, in don't get stuck in these weeds, you know, don't get mm -hmm. stuck, you know, don't don't lose don't lose sight of the big picture because of That's the right. moment that you're going through you know yep. and i appreciate that you've been able to do that with me in the past and um and that's been amazing thank you so much again i know i know we've been uh talking about doing this and again even yeah. though it's your daughter's birthday you took the time out <laughs> to, to still yeah thank you thank you thank you it's been it's been a pleasure um so yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been it's been a pleasure. Um, for for do you want to drop? Well, I'll tag you, and, you know, in, on your Instagram page. But do you want to put that out? So yeah. To I mean, of course, of course. Anything to? I mean, I love what you're doing. It's a good thing. You you know, usually we interview people who are huge. <laughs> I don't consider myself huge, but so I'm honored. I mean, anything to um, right. further your dream, I, of course, I'll do that. Thank I you. appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much again. It's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, we will We will catch you all on the next all episode. Right. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you, for listening. Thank you all. Have a good night. Bye.